Welcome back everyone. We're going to be heading down the road to revolution today. We're going to get our first steps on the road that's going to lead to us being an independent country. And so some of this today is going to be a review because we're going to start with what we talked about last week, which was the French and Indian War. And in this war, if you remember, we're looking at our American Revolution notes three and we're on the causes of the revolution one, those fill in the blank kind of Cornell style notes. So last week we talked about the French and Indian War, so there should be some review for you. It was Britain and the American colonists versus the French and their Native American allies, which is why the Americans called it the French and Indian War, because that's who they were fighting. So in this war, if we look at number 1.1, the British are going to beat France. And as a result, though, it was like that credit card bill. They spent a lot of money, and it was really fun until they got the bill. Now on 1.2, they have this big, big debt from the war. Parliament, who remember, is kind of running the show by now. They're the ones in head of, head of the British government, not so much the king right now. But the king as well is going to want this. says, you know, we spent a lot of money in America. Maybe the Americans should be the one that pay for some of this bill. The big problem we're going to see is that, you know, the Americans, they're not used to paying for anything. And so when they ask, it's going to be an issue. So Britain and Spain, after this war, are going to control the continent. If we look at our map here, where it's pretty much right down the Mississippi River. And the other important thing for this French Indian War, it leads to the colonies who kind of are going to come united for the first time against this foe, which back then was the Native Americans and the French. But later they're going to become united and we're going to see united against the British. And when we get to the war, it's going to be great because a lot of Americans have some good military fighting experience, which they get first in this French Indian War, including a guy by the name of George Washington. That's the first step. And I know that's a lot of review. Well, pretty much right after... The French and Indian War, the British find themselves fighting another conflict in pretty much the exact same spot they just got finished. The difference here is that they're not fighting against the French anymore. They're pretty much just fighting against the Native Americans. So you have this guy named Pontiac, and he is this Indian war chief. And we're on number two and 2.1 of our notes. Again, we're right after the French and Indian War. And on 2.2, this Pontiac, he's this Indian war leader. He unites all these different Native American tribes. So, you know, we got to remember the Native Americans are not one group. They are, you know, dozens and dozens of these different tribes that have been fighting wars for a while. But now they're going to unite with Pontiac against the British. And these Native Americans, they're getting worried, you know, gosh, this land had been, you know, we had controlled it, of course, but also the French were here. The French had respected our ways and hadn't pushed us behind. We know from what's been happening on the East Coast in those 13 colonies what's going to happen. So we kind of got to strike back. So what they do is they attack a bunch of different forts. And if you look at the map, you can kind of see all the different forts that get attacked throughout this area. And the problem for the Native Americans is they win a lot of battles. In fact, they win most battles, but they only really win the small battles. They never went, end up winning that big battle that could have turned out that they won at Detroit or something like that or Niagara. That could help, but they never win those battles. So they're only winning the small battles, okay? But if we look at 2.3, the major effect of this is going to be that eventually the Native Americans are going to be defeated. They're going to force Pontiac to sign a peace treaty. But at least the proclamation of 1763. And we're going to look at that one now because that's our third step along the way. Basically, Parliament and King George looked at the situation and said, okay, yeah, we won this war, but man, it is expensive. We got to keep all these forts out there. We got to repair more forts. And gee, it would just be nice if we could just make the Native Americans not be mad at us. Well, let's remember, what are the Native Americans mad about? It's that you're taking their land over. So King George III comes out and says, there's not going to be any more settlement west of the Appalachian Mountains. So that's got us all the way through 3.2. 3.3 of our no notes now. And this really, really upsets the colonists that the king is going to come out and say, hey, I know why we consider you British subjects, but you're not allowed to go into this British territory. Because now they're saying, 
no one can go west of the Appalachian Mountains. Well, this is an issue because some colonists already have gone west of the Appalachian Mountains and already have settlements. Now they're going to be told, you have to come back. Likewise, you know, they never would have told the British subject that living in like England, hey, you can't go, you know, across the country to this other part of the country. They would say, you know, hey, the constant, we're British. That's British territory. Why can't we go there? Plus, you combine this with the fact that now they've just got done with the French and Indian War, which was fought to get control of this land so they could expand their settlements. Now the king's saying you can't expand your settlements. Well, imagine how angry you're going to be if you're a colonist that has probably fought in this war. And now the king's asking you to pay for this war, which was fought to get this land for settlement. Now you're being told you can't settle there. So this really upsets Congress, and they feel it's against their rights, which is 3.4. So we're going to see how this ties into some later events as we go forward.